Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. This is an existing customer calling us back to do additional work. We did a 200 amp service upgrade there last winter and we were there pretty late. Last time I remember being there it was cold and there was snow and ice on the ground. So we're back to install an electric baseboard heat. Um, it's 96 inches, approximately 2,000 watts. Uh, so we're going to install the thermos, the line voltage thermostat, the heater. We're also going to run a couple extra 20 amp circuits for additional use later on. The first thing we're going to do is take out a single gang box and put in a three gang box for those two future switches that we're going to install today when the owner decides to do some outside lighting or ceiling fans. So we're just prepping for that by taking out this single gang box and making it a three gang box. And we do that by cutting the nails on the existing box by cutting them with a sawzall, as you'll see in this next clip. single gang box out of the way, I can trace out for my new three gang box, and then I'll use the multi-tool to cut out the sheetrock. Once I've cut out the new three gang box, I need to get this old single gang box out of the wall. To do that, I need to make, I need to disconnect my splices and try to remove the cables, especially the bottom cable here, uh, out of the box so I'm able to pull the old box out of the wall and toss it right in the trash. So what's going to happen here is there's going to be an outside junction box and I'm going to run along the outside of the house with some 3 quarter inch PVC I'm going to be running three different circuits. Two of them are going to be 20 amp 120 volt circuits and the third circuit will be a 20 amp 240 volt circuit for the baseboard heater. So before you put these boxes in you want to leave the access holes open uh, in order to snake your wires from the outside junction box line bolt thermostat that I'm about to cut in and for the two switch legs and we'll also run the wire down to the baseboard heater before we install these switches.
I'm gonna go ahead and install this 96 inch 8 foot electric baseboard heater and I'm using the two pieces of sheetrock I just cut out for the two switches I'm working on as a spacer off the floor for this baseboard heater. There's some quarter round base molding there that instead of taking that out, um, we left it in place and the two pieces of half inch sheetrock stacked on top of each other gave me enough room uh, off of the floor and above that molding uh, as to not interfere with the heater. Uh, so then I'll snake the wires up to the, to the thermostat location here and bring the wire down to connect to the back of the baseboard heater. This is a 240 volt heater and uh, the leads on either end of this heater is where the wires can be connected, the supply wires can be connected. So, like I said here, uh, and the one thing I want to make a point of here is, is the equipment grounded conducted here. Very important. Um, I believe you're not really an electrician until you know how to ground. And uh, bonding this, the metal frame with this feeder, I, I might, it's very important to just do a good job. So, what I do is I wrap the wire clockwise around the grounding connector and then take a needle, needle nose to squeeze the conductor and make a nice solid bond so that the, all the metal on the appliance here is electrically grounded. Okay, then you need to identify your conductor as being a hot conductor and I do that with the black vinyl tape here. Then I split the two wires together from each other and take my splice. It's 120 volts and 120 volts make a 240 volt connection. So the next step in this project is to snake the wires from the outside junction box down into the switches and to the thermostat. So my main objective in the morning here, working at this house, was to get that electric heater in, to get my switches and cover plates on, and of course the line voltage thermostat connected. So that in the afternoon I could work on the junction boxes and get my PVC from this area of the house here back over to the panel. Uh, that's what we'll be doing in the afternoon. So I just wanted to get this done in the morning, so my afternoon was kind of light. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I'm not sure how many people have seen these boxes, but these are Arlington Smart Boxes. And they come with screws built in to the box. Now, normally, that's a code violation if the box is not designed to have screws or nails inside the box. But here, that the box is specifically designed 
attach it to a wall stud. And I had a little problem with the wall stud here because the wall stud was warped. Um, so the, the right side of the box is a little further in than the left side of the box so that the box is flush with the finished wall. So wiring switches is pretty easy. Um, again, I've been an electrician a long time, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I ran a three wire down from the junction box, and I'm using the white wire of that three wire cable as a live feed for both of my switches. So what I'll do is I'll identify that white wire with black tape, black vinyl tape, and pigtail to each of the switches. So each of the switches has a hot conductor, and then the other conductor is the switch leg. And once I put on this plate and I did the screws, I had to take it back out later and, uh, and adjust it. It just wasn't level like the way I wanted to see it. And I put my level on top of that plate and it was off, not by much, but enough. I noticed it and so I did something about it and I just adjusted the switches and redid the plate so it looks perfect. And at the end of this video, you can see the picture of the finished product inside this room. All right, so same thing here with the line bolt, the thermostat, each of those white wires has to be identified somehow, either a magic marker or vinyl tape or whatever you want to do. You just got to identify that white wire so the next guy that comes in, if he doesn't know any better, he'll know that that's a live conductor. And this is basically just a basic line voltage thermostat. It's a Honeywell and it just turns the thing on and off and adjusts the temperature. All right, so after lunch here, um, see in the upper right hand corner there the junction box is in place with the wires uh, I think I ran out of battery or I forgot to turn on the uh, GoPro that I use to make these videos and so uh, there's some stuff that's missing here in this video unfortunately uh, but basically what I'm doing is I'm running from that junction box with the PVC conduits three quarter inch PVC schedule 40 and uh, I'll run along the back side of this house and try to install it as neat as possible um, I use two LVs, uh, three LV can, uh, fittings, and um, one expansion coupling, and one 90 degree that I made with this uh, Greenleaf PVC vendor. This Milwaukee tool right here is an M12 plastic pipe shear. Uh, it's designed for cutting PVC. It's like my favorite new tool. I think I mentioned that on a previous video. Uh, but it just cuts that pipe, the conduit, so fast that uh, I love it. Uh, unfortunately, it was bouncing around in my truck and the trigger handle, where you put your finger, it, the piece of plastic broke and it's gone and I don't know what happened to it. And it's not that old. Uh, but I don't let that stop me from using it. So. Uh, so make sure when you're using glue and PVC that you get a nice contact here. You see I'll move that PVC around there so it gets a nice contact with the conduit. Um, so here I'm coming around the corner and I'm cutting out this conduit here to fit a, uh, an expansion coupling. Uh, before I can do that, this piece of pipe right here is hot and you see it now. So I can get a small offset, get into that LB on the right hand side of your screen there. So, what I'll do is I'll stand there and I'll wait for it to cool off so I get the right degree of bend and then uh, I'll fit the um, expansion coupling in. And again, I had problems with the, with the video today, but there's the expansion coupling installed. <clears throat> and what that does, if, if the sun is beating down on that, it'll allow for the expansion of that PVC. All right, so there's the junction box that's above the, the switches that we worked on earlier. And um, there's not much room here uh, to do a 90 degree turn. You go into the top of this box, so what I'm doing is I'm fitting in an, L, an LL fitting into the top here. So when I take the cover off of the, the fitting, I'm able to use that uh, 
uh, to push the snake through and it allows me access to pulling the wires. So once the hole is drilled through the brick, that allows me access to drill a hole through the sheathing on the outside, and then I push the snake through uh, and hit the top of this panel here. And as you can see, there's a couple knockouts there, and I've, I'm able to push the snake right through the hole. So I got to be real careful here because that's a live bus right there where the circuit breakers go. So I got to be ultra careful here. Uh, that could be a fatality waiting to happen. Uh, so once I hook the wires onto my snake. I'll tape them up real good, and then I'll pull them out through the outside uh, to where the other junction box is going to go. In reality, this took me about 30 to 40 minutes to get this done, uh, but the uh, beauty of editing looks like I did it in five minutes. What I'm doing here is I'm prepping the other junction box for the home runs and to continue the conduit run. It's a couple of three quarter inch male adapters uh, and then of course I'll use some cork, cork up that hole before installing the junction box so it can prevent the air from entering the conditioned space. Uh, yeah, so I thought I had video of uh, me pulling these conductors here, but I'm using this great Milwaukee nylon snake. Fantastic pulling device here for sure. So I ran, like I said, three circuits. Uh, so that's a total of seven conductors in here. Um, <clears throat> one equipment ground, so all 20 amp circuits, so it's a 20 amp equipment ground. That covers all the circuits, the one ground. And um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments section. I appreciate you watching these videos. I'm hoping you're enjoying them. I hope to make some more one, some more videos in the future, some better videos in the future. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.